Assalamu alaikum and welcome to my prayer project. Today we'll be discussing the funeral prayer and how it should be performed. Throughout our lives we are taught that the sky is the limit. However, this is not our only reality. There comes a time when our lives on this earth will end. And as we speak, there are many funeral prayers being performed all across the globe. The question is, however, do we know how to perform these prayers correctly? So join us as we explore the benefits and the rights of the funeral prayer. In accordance to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد. After I give a brief history on the funeral prayer, I will be discussing the rules of the prayer, and I will also be discussing how the prayer is performed, and then I will give a general advice. The funeral prayer was sanctioned only for the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad. It's a special distinction that was given only to the Prophet and to this Ummah. So by default. It is a very, very special thing. The Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, he performed funeral prayer on an Najashi. Najashi was the Abyssinian king who the Muslims, when they suffered persecution from the Quraysh, they sought protection under his rulership in Abyssinia. The funeral prayer is also very important to be performed upon the deceased, whether they be male and female. And the prayer itself is one of forgiveness and one of pardon for the deceased. And this was one of the reasons why it was sanctioned for the Ummah, because it was such a virtuous act to the extent that the Prophet ﷺ, he said that if a person, he performs the funeral prayer upon his brother, then he will receive one kirat of rewards. He said if he further continues and he goes to the grave and he accompanies that person to the grave, after which the person is buried, he will receive two kirat of rewards. They said, O Prophet of God, what is kirat? And the Prophet والسلام, he said, mountains, indicating that a person who performs the funeral prayer upon his Muslim brother or sister, and a person who then continues the act and follows the person and accompanies the janazah until the person is buried, then he will receive two mountains of rewards. What a virtuous act indeed it is. It is also a virtuous act that the Prophet ﷺ, he said that if 40 people who associate nothing with Allah, they gather and they perform the funeral prayer upon their deceased brother, then their intercession will be accepted. He also said in another narration, narrated in Muslim, that if a person, he performs funeral prayer upon his brother, and the number of people present are 100, then that intercession on his behalf will be accepted. So we see through the ahadith narrated by the Prophet that the funeral prayer is indeed held in such high esteem in Islam. Before finalizing or summing up the brief history on the funeral prayer, I will just add that the Prophet ﷺ, he said that your Muslim brother, he, has, he holds five five rights over you and one of those things which the prophet mentioned was the right to have the funeral prayer performed upon him i will conclude by saying that such ahadith that are narrated to us by the prophet والسلام, indicate just how important the funeral prayer is one critical element to note when we look at the funeral prayer in terms of society is the ruling of the funeral prayer in terms of jurisprudence. The funeral prayer is a fard kifaya, which means that a portion of the community must conduct the funeral prayer. And if they conduct the funeral prayer, then the rest of the community is relieved of the obligation. However, if such a portion of the community or a small portion of the community do not offer the funeral prayer upon a deceased, then the sin falls upon the entire community. And this alludes to the importance of the funeral prayer and its ruling and how it is held in Islam. So after having been given a brief history on the funeral prayer, it's important now to discuss the rules pertaining to the funeral prayer. However, before going through the way the prayer is conducted, 
Let's talk a little bit about the pillars and the conditions. This is also very important. The pillars of the funeral prayer are a few things. The first thing is that we say the takbirs. So when we say Allahu Akbar, this is regarded as a pillar of the prayer. So you can't have the prayer without saying the takbirs. That's number one. Number two, you must stand for the prayer. This is also a fundamental element of the prayer that it cannot literally be without. The conditions of the funeral prayer are that first of all, that the dead or the deceased be Muslim, that he be in a clean state because it is the right of the Imam who is actually performing the prayer that when the deceased is in front of him, he be in a clean state. And it is also important that the deceased be placed in front of the Imam and that the deceased or the majority of his body be present at that time. So when the Imam comes to the prayer, after having met all the conditions, first of all, he intends the prayer. Now the intention of the prayer is like the intention of any other prayer, as you would make for Fajr or for Dhuhr or for Asr. So when he comes to the prayer and he makes his first takbir and he says, Allahu Akbar, raising his hands, he says the ta'awud, which is, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajim. And this is followed by the Fatiha. Now the Fatiha begins by saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, so on and so forth. And I will, of course, demonstrate this practically later on in due course. This is followed then by the second takbir. So the Imam and the followers, they again say, Allahu Akbar, raising their hands. After they raise their hands for the second takbir, this is followed by the Ibrahimiyyah, which is Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim, so on and so forth to the end, which means, Ya Allah, send blessings upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad as you did for, and so on and so forth. And I will, of course, be demonstrating this when I show you how the prayer is performed. Then the Imam and the followers say the third takbir, raising their hands, saying Allahu Akbar for the third time. Following this takbir, dua is made for the deceased. Now, there is a lengthy dua that the person makes. I will be demonstrating this, but it begins by saying Allahu maghfir lahu, warhamhu, wa'afi, wa'fu anhu, so on and so forth. And I will be showing you how this is performed correctly. If a person does not know that dua, then he can restrict his words to saying Allahu maghfir lahu, Allahu maghfir lahu, Allahu maghfir lahu, which means, Ya Allah, forgive him, Ya Allah, pardon him, Ya Allah, forgive him, and Ya Allah, pardon him. The Imam then makes a takbir a fourth time, raising his hands, saying, Allahu Akbar, and this is also done by the people behind him. In this situation, the dua is a general one, which could be, Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana, which means, Ya Allah, give us the good in this life and the good in the hereafter and protect us and save us from the fire of hell, Ya Allah. After this, the Imam gives salam to the right, saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Then to the left, saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The followers then imitate what the Imam has done in their taslim. And this concludes the prayer, which I will now perform in front of you. I will now demonstrate how the funeral prayer is performed. Allahu Akbar. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الله أكبر اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد الله أكبر اللهم اغفر له وارحمه وعافي واعف عنه وأكرم نزله ووسع مدخله وغسله بالماء والثلج والبرد 
ونكحه من الخطايا كما ينكي الثوب الأبيض من الدنس وأبدله ديرا خيرا من داره وأهلا خيرا من أهله وزوجا خيرا من زوجه وأدخله الجنة وأعذه من عذاب القبر وعذاب النار الله أكبر اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله And that concludes the funeral prayer As a last advice to my fellow Muslim brothers and sisters I will just remind you that the Prophet والسلام, he promised great reward and alluded to the fact that there are great rewards for offering the funeral prayer over our Muslim brothers and sisters. Imagine that on the day of judgment when you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you find a mountain on your right of deeds and a mountain on your left of deeds and you will say, where did these mountains of deeds come from? And then you will be informed it is because you performed funeral prayer over your brother. Imagine your joy on that day from having just performed the funeral prayer upon your deceased brother. Also, I would remind you that it is the sunnah of the Prophet. You're following the Prophet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ What the Prophet gave you, take it. And what he forbade you from, abstain from it. So this is an act of the Prophet which he himself performed. And should you perform the same act, then you would be following in the footsteps of the greatest man who ever walked the earth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also in that regard, I would just also remind you that it is the right of your brother to have that funeral prayer performed over him. Imagine that the Prophet said that were a hundred people together, none of them associating anything with Allah, to perform the prayer over the dead and their intercession would be accepted. Indeed, this is testament. This is testament without a doubt to the destination of where a person goes. For we not know where a person goes except through two ways. First of all, through the tongue of a prophet. Where the Prophet والسلام, he informs the people upon the earth that this person is from Ahl al-Jannah, from the people of paradise, or this person is from the people of hell. But in a second way, we know from the testimony of the people who were there upon the earth. There was once a man who died and the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, he heard people speaking about him in a very negative way. And the Prophet said, they have testified to his destination. And in another situation where the man, he had passed away and the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, he heard people speaking about him in a very, very positive way. And the Prophet indicated that they have testified to his destination. Indeed, performing the prayer upon the deceased, the funeral prayer upon the deceased, this is a means of intercession. It is a means of forgiveness for him. It is a means of pardon for him. There was one man in the time of the Prophet who passed away. And the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Salam, he made a long dua for him. And after he made a long dua for him in the funeral prayer, one Sahabi, he said, I wish I was that dead person. This indicates the magnitude of the funeral prayer and it indicates that if the funeral prayer is performed, it can be a means of forgiveness and pardon for the deceased. One day we will all go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we would hope that many would perform the funeral prayer over us so that could also be a means of forgiveness and pardon for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept.